In 1962, John Glenn orbited the Earth. It was the first time an American had done so. It was an enormous achievement, historic, groundbreaking. And yet many tabloids chose to go with Elizabeth Taylor stealing Richard Burton away from his wife while they were making Cleopatra in Rome. This was how famous Elizabeth Taylor was, that you could actually bump John Glenn's historic space flight off the front pages. There was no one bigger than Elizabeth Taylor in 1962. She was the most recognizable woman in the world. And you have to remember that back in, in, in that time, there, were, there were, wasn't the kind of celebrities that we have today. There were, there were uh, essentially, there were TV stars and recording stars and movie stars. And movie stars were the creme de la creme. They were the top of the heap. Um, Elizabeth Taylor was the biggest movie star uh, of the time. Everyone followed what she did. She learned at a very young age how to walk, how to talk, how to turn and face the camera, how to meet her marks when the director called action. She knew exactly how to sell the glamour and the mystique and the image of, of, uh, of a movie star. Before she was a teenager, she learned all of these lessons at a very young age and then very successfully carried those with her. When the studios collapsed in the 1950s and the early 1960s, Elizabeth had those lessons very, uh, very strong in her mind and took them with her when she went on to become an independent movie star. She was the, the movie star uh, to begin and end all movie stars. But at the same time, she could rise to the occasion to be a, a really damn good actor when she, when she wanted to and when she had a director who was willing to work with her with good material. Um, I defy anybody to, to point out someone else who could have done what she did in Place in the Sun. In 1958, shortly after her husband Mike Todd was killed in an airplane crash, Elizabeth fell in love with Eddie Fisher. Now, back in the day, back in the, the, the height of the studios, they would have assumed that this kind of publicity would be hurtful to someone's career. Here's, here's Elizabeth's husband, recently deceased, and she falls in love with a married man uh, with two little children. Elizabeth had a very shrewd agent by the name of Kurt Frings. And he came up with a rather, rather radical notion for the time that there was no such thing as bad publicity. If one looks at the lines that wrapped around the blocks to see this movie, there was, the, the interest in the scandal was so high that there was, people flocked to see Cat on the Hudson Roof. She created the playbook of stardom. And everybody from Madonna to Britney Spears to Miley Cyrus have taken a page from her playbook, whether they fully know it or not, it all goes back to Elizabeth.